What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. We're playing a little bit more Pine where we are finally a free. We're out of the little beginning portion. Actually, one thing I really like about this game, having streamed it now over on my channel on Twitch, is that I like that the game opens up quickly. There's nothing worse than a sandbox game that like leaves you in like a constrained, confined tutorial for a long amount of time and never lets you get to the main part of the game. And so I really do appreciate that they get you into the free roaming portion about as fast as possible. Uh, there is a lot of work left to be done before we're into like the main crux though, where we're actually like manipulating the geopolitics of the map and stuff like that. Oh yes, this game opens up in depth more than you think it will. Trust me, I put about four hours in and I'm consistently impressed by, like, the further I get into the game, the more they keep adding more mechanics and things that, like, you've got to work on. So anyways, you got to go find Oth. Uh, I think Oth is actually hanging over on this little berm over here. So let's go talk to him. We'll see what he's got rocking for us right now. And then we will start meeting some of the other members of this universe. Back so soon, are we? <laughs> you look concerned. As far as I can tell. Well, as far as I can tell with you humans. Something terrible happened. Another landslide, huh? Hmm. We can't live on the cliff any longer. I need to find help. We need to move. Hmm. A new place to live. That might not be very easy. The island is full of creatures much stronger and smarter than you and I. Or, well, smarter than you, at least. You see, all those tribes are fighting over territory and food. It's kind of a mess sometimes. In fact, I was just here observing some of the villages because I don't even know who's occupying them at this very moment. Could be the Crockers, the Litters, the Caribblins. Here's my suggestion, though. Look for caches known as donation boxes. They're used by all the species to share and give resources to each other in perilous times. I think that if you make an offering to the village and then find that village, they'll probably let you in, or they might even be able to help you. Okay? I'll try. To be fair, I have very little business with all of this. Us Tombas... We're just observing, learning, studying, and doing it all from the comfort of our little house. I'll mark it on your map, though. It's in the center of the island in case we ever need you. Okay, so there we are. Uh, we've officially unlocked the relationships that we have with all of the people all over the map. And it's actually kind of precarious. you got to pick and choose who you want to side with. Uh, there's a bunch of anthropomorphic races in this game. There's some crocodiles. There's, like, some geckos. There's some foxes, there's some chickens, or like some turkey-looking critters, uh, there's some mooses, and all of them have their own goals and aspirations and things they're trying to accomplish, as well as expanding their influence and kind of making the world bigger and better in their favor. These guys will also make alliances and things like that with one another. They have relationships with one another. They argue and they bicker and they fight on the roads when those economic and diplomatic relations fall out. And so it makes the game very, very interesting and sort of dynamic feeling as you're playing. Our first village is going to be right up here on this hill, actually. And I think it's the Caribblins that we're going to be talking to first. Uh, they're the guys that are mooses or caribou or whatever they are. I honestly couldn't tell you the difference between, like, a moose and a caribou. I honestly don't know. Like, but I assume they're different. Right now, they're hostile. So we're going to have to take care of that. We don't really have much of an option. And we can mostly do that through donating. Uh, as you can see, they aren't really giving us a whole lot of reputation for any of the stuff that we're giving them right now. And so we're going to have to find special things that they want, like carrots. And that's going to bump us on up to neutral so that they're no longer upset with us. Luckily, we're not really hurting for food or anything right now. And it looks like they are hurting for food. And so they're doing some pretty good trades for food. So we're going to confirm this right here just to get them up to neutral. And so now we should be able to walk into town and say, what's up? So let's go on in here. We'll meet some new friends. And hopefully they'll be able to back us up with a little bit of new gear. Some weaponry, maybe some items and things of that nature. And it'll make things a little bit simpler on our adventures. We also want to make sure that we're picking up these objects everywhere that we see them. Uh, these right here are basically the equivalent of a collection quest. They're called Amphiscus Orbs. And they're used for something important later on in the game that you're definitely wanna, gonna want to collect them for. Trust me, you're gonna want those. It's kind of a major thing. And so, oh, this actually, the villages are randomized. It's the little froggy guys over here this time around. Oh, interesting. In my stream playthrough, this was a moose village. Interesting. Okay. Word has it the humans are exploring a bit too much. Are you? So we need to talk to a couple of people around here. We need to learn about the city. And the way that we learn about the city is we check out this tower right here. This tower actually reflects the health of the village. The bigger it is and the more ornate it is, the more healthy this village is. So right now, their population is okay. They've got a lot of food, but they don't have a lot of building materials. 
Whoa, that's quite a tower. I can see it on the horizon. It seems to indicate the wealth and population of the village. Do the flames on top indicate their size, maybe? So there you go. So we've got that covered. We filled up our meter a little bit. Now I think we need to talk to the trader, who's going to be down here on this little bluff. And once we talk to the trader, we'll find out some useful information. You must be the trader? Ugh, I've had my share of strange creatures pass by my shop, but none like you. And again, experience tells me the stranger the looks, the deeper the pockets, so... When they said a human would come by, they didn't really prepare me for somebody this fragile. Fragile? Well, yeah, I don't think there are people on Albemare that could not break those arms of yours. Best thing I got for you is some ideas that could fit to your size. I'm not gonna trade with you, though, unless we're friends. I can't have my goods in the hands of our enemies. So there you go. Your reputation with the town actually affects who will trade with you, and you need to be allied with a faction before they will trade with you. But if you're allied with one faction, their enemies are gonna know that you allied with them, and they're not gonna wanna kick it with you either. So it's a delicate, precarious balance. Uh, this right here is the reputation board. So if you take a look up at the top, you will see that there's like a little wheel. If it's in the red, it means they're hostile with that faction. And if it's green, it means they're friends with that faction. And this is somewhat randomized too, I think, at the beginning of your game. Because like these guys on my map aren't really getting along with anybody. But on this map, it seems like they're getting along with people. At least half the people on the map. So if it's in the red, they're hostile. If it's in the white... It means that they're neutral, and if it's in the green, this means they're allies, and they're friends with that faction. From the left to the right, we've got the Karablins, which are the moose people. And we've got the Litter, which is the foxes. We've got the, I think they're called the, what are they called? The Crockers, which is the crocodile people who are like big giant crocodiles with spears. And then these guys right here are turkeys, if I remember right. I forget what they're called, like cluckers or something like that. What an intricate mechanism of wheels. It seems to display the relationships between the creatures. Looks like those in red are their foes and green means allies, and I guess white is neutral? There you go. And so they're going to change throughout the course of the game, too. I don't know if you were watching, but the wheel right there with the caribou actually, like, shifted slightly while we were looking at it. And so as they're fighting and doing battle and trading with each other across the map, the reputations will shift up and down based on the balance of power and who's the richest, who's the poorest, who's the most desperate. Uh, that guy right there is a crocker, in case you were wondering. A crocker trader. You can tell by what they have on their backs right there. So if he had, like, armor on, he's a guard. Uh, if he has that on, it means that he's a traitor. And then there's another one, the third one. I forget what it is, like a diplomat or something like that. And if you kill them on the road, they will drop different missives and things like that that you can trade in in order to sabotage or use as spy data and stuff like that. But that's kind of a mechanic for later on in the game. Well, have I ever. My eyes deceiving me? A human. In flesh and bone. Forgive me for the express consternation, but it's been decades since anybody saw a human on this island. What do they call you, young one? Uh, my name is Hugh, and I've come from uh, the Unstable Cliffs. My tribe can't really live there any longer, so I've come to find refuge. I donated to your village hoping to get some help. <laughs> but I live to see this day. I admire your courage, Hugh. But a place to live, that's not really in my interest right now, I'm afraid. I have plenty of mouths to feed, as does everyone on the island. However, your donation did not go unnoticed, and I thank you for that wholeheartedly. Not everyone will share the peaceful interest that I have for humans, and you look weary and unprepared for what seems to be a burdensome task. I'll have our village trader retrieve an old shield from our stock, one that would fit your hands. Perhaps explore the village in the meantime, as there should be plenty to learn for a creature like you. The shield is ready when you're ready to leave. A shield? Well, hopefully I'll be able to handle it. Well, you've gotten this far. I should also think about what you can do to reach your goal. It's high time someone or something stirs things up in the daily grind on Albemare. Come see me when you've received your shield. Okay, so let's go get our shield. It's laying over here right next to this shop. Looks like the croc guy did his trading. It looks sturdy. Enough loitering. I should ask the chief for more pointers. So there you go. We've now got ourselves a big old dope shield. So we need to dive on in here and we need to equip it. There you go. So now we've got a shield. We can use this to block if we really want to. Uh, it's not going to activate the block for a minute. I noticed the delay when I was streaming it too. It's like the game doesn't register you have the shield for a little bit. There it is. And so there you go. We've got a shield, which means we can now parry and fight with things along the road. Although I wouldn't recommend it. We're kind of weak right now. I'm glad you found the shield, young human. Still, you look like a brittle ting flower I could snap in half before breakfast. I asked around a bit, and then I realized there's someone more capable than us to help you with gearing up. Oh well, yeah? Who's that? His name is Grob. He's one of the man-off. Nobody's seen him for ages, but apparently he's still alive. 
Word has it he resides in the Pollen Pass between the shore cliffs and the sparse fields, and finding him is probably not going to be easy. But he has enough experience with human gear to at least give it a shot. Okay, I'll try to find him. Thank you. Surely you will. You got this far. Good luck, human. I like how they just gave this guy a shiny hat, and that's how you know he's the leader. Everybody is walking around all hatless and lame. He's walking around with a big old shiny hat, and that automatically puts him in charge. So the next time you go out and you find some quartz crystals or whatever, just consider briefly making a hat out of it. Maybe it'll actually gift you with some diplomatic or social position that you didn't have before. I can't promise that it will. I'm not that experienced in the ways of the world, but it can't hurt. Nothing going on over here. We can't loot any of that stuff, unfortunately, as much as I'd like to. And we got any enemies or anything else around? It actually looks pretty peaceful over here. When I came in here on my like my stream game, man, there was like a giant war zone over here of just all the factions trying to kill each other. Looks like a gatherer died over here, unfortunately, so we'll pick up all of his stuff. It's not like incredibly useful right now, but it will be later. It looks like he actually looted this nest over here, too, because normally there's eggs spawned in this little area. And so I think the gatherer came over here, got the eggs, killed off a bunch of enemies, and then died. And the treehouse on this side. We can't really do anything with it for right now. We'll come back momentarily because our little Manoth buddy is hiding inside this cave. Uh, that hitching that you're seeing right there, that's from the game auto-saving, uh, from what I can tell. It's either from loading or from auto-saving. I've been playing a lot in my free time because I really like the game. I think it's really fun. The combat is a little tiny bit... Well, the combat is clunky, okay? The combat is clunky, but the rest of the game is pretty enjoyable. I haven't seen any other issues other than the fact that the combat is kind of like a clunkier outward or like a clunkier fable. But in general, I've been having a good time. Now, the guy we're looking for is inside of here. We're going to have to actually take this. There we go. And then we'll just kind of plop that right there. And then that right there is going to make that fall, maybe? I don't know. And then we'll put this right here. And then we should be good to go meet our Manoth buddy. All right. Oh, there it goes. It fell and it broke. I guess it falls and breaks once you're no longer on this little spot. Hello? A human. In my cavern, nonetheless. Happy days. It's been ages. You must be Grob? Sure am. You have no idea how long I haven't had any company. And from a human, nonetheless. You never leave the cavern? Nah, the outside world, it's... It's not for me anymore. Everyone's occupied with their own problems, and there's a total lack of community. Apart from you humans, I could only really bear my sister's presence, but I haven't seen her in a long time. There's more of you? Oh, there used to be plenty of us. But we retreated as the islanders grew more hungry for power every day. Anyways, you came for some business, I hope? I was told to come and find you for some protective gear and maybe some tools. Hmm, ouch. Haven't done those in quite a while. I gave my last human creations to someone just like you, but that was ages ago. He was a friend. I believe he used to hide in an abandoned watchtower nearby. I created gear, tools, and also chests to hide belongings in. In return, he brought me these shiny orbs. I love them. You should go to his hideout. Maybe you'll find some human belongings there still. Before I forget, all my chests come with tiny keys. You'll need key graphite in order to make them. I'll write it down for you. Okay. I'll try to find it. Thanks for stopping by, human, and please, give me a visit sometime. So there you go. Key graphite is kind of like a finite resource. Uh, you find some of it around, and every time you get eight of it, you can get a special key that'll open these locked chests that are hidden all over the map, like all over the place, and each one will have like a really nice recipe inside of it that you kind of want. Uh, you don't want to like skimp out on those because there's a pretty good chance that if you don't use that recipe now, you may outgrow it when you get a recipe later, and then you'll never have a chance to capitalize on it being like more efficient than everything that you have. And so anyways... If you're trying to move along in the game, that's my recommendation, is try to open as many chests as you can, as soon as you can. Okay. So we're back outside in our little mine right now. It's a pleasant evening. I do like the fact that this game isn't oppressively dark. 
when nighttime comes around. Some games are just like way too dark at night and it just drives me up a wall. Like your eyes adjust IRL and like after a couple hours in the dark with no other light sources, you should be pretty tuned in. That primal instinct takes over. Over here we got a little puzzle we gotta solve with the tower that our human buddy was hiding in. And so we'll go ahead and smack that right there. And this is gonna take us on up. And then we'll check out all this stuff. So we've got the Wedgwood wrist guard. Very nice. We've got the Wedgwood Tunic idea. We've got Wedgwood Leg Guards. And then we've got some Wedgwood Pants right there. So we'll grab all those. We've also got a Power Brew idea right here. These Power Brews are very, very valuable diplomatic objects that you can give up in order to like get a bunch of reputation. Or you can just use them on yourself to increase your attack power. We've also got some Soft Glass right there. And then the note is handwritten by a human. Day 166. Today I met up with some leaders of the Vault Villages. I've been charting the shortest routes that connect the ancient places for months now. The vaults are very important for the bright future ahead. I've also found out that crafting a power brew gets you inside any village. The chiefs really love them. Vaults. What are those? It sounds like there might be some answers in there, and maybe they could provide a place to live? I should visit those. He marked the map. So there you go. We now have access to all the vaults. Uh, but there's a little bit more gear inside of here we need to track down before we go anywhere, and it's actually pretty easy to get your hands on. He's got to shoot that right there. And then this will take you on up to a whole nother level, in case you didn't notice. And then it looks like an advanced slingshot? Seems like I'll need to craft something other than pebbles to fire it, though. Uh, we get our first bow. And this thing is actually incredibly powerful. Like, ranged combat in this game is a way better idea than diving into melee most of the time. You're smaller than just about everything else in this game, so you're going to want to take it easy when it comes to run up and up, running up on stuff and trying to slit its throat. It ain't going to work out. Bows are powerful ranged weapons but require ammo to shoot. Yep. I think we all know how a bow works. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a few arrows, though, just to make our lives easier. And now we have some goals that we got to play around with. They want us to go to one of the vault villages. We're not going to do that just yet. We're probably just going to explore a little bit. We haven't done anything other than storylines here for a while. That chest right there is one of the chests that I was talking about where you open it up with one of the keys, in case you were wondering. But we don't have any graphite right now, so unfortunately that's not really going to be an option. Let's slap on our new gear just to give ourselves a little bit more defense. You know, we don't have that much to play around with, but it's something. And it'll buff our HP up ever so slightly. We're also going to go ahead and equip our arrows. And you'll notice that we've also got a recipe for making arrows inside of here. If we can only find a few more dull rocks. We just need some more dull rocks. Let's go up to the top of the mountain and see what we find. There's lots of adventuring and like little areas in this game to kind of look around in. Sometimes it can feel a little tiny bit like empty when you're out in the middle of nowhere. But trust me, right about the time you get that feeling, you'll find something interesting. And so just keep pushing it and looking around and going to the top of every hill and looking out and seeing where the shinies are and all that kind of stuff. I, I'm i willing to bet you you'll find something worthwhile eventually. What do we have over here? Ah, there's that key graphite I was talking about. So now that we got our hands on some of the key graphite, I don't think we have eight of it. I think we have like four right now. Maybe five or six, but once we get that all locked in, we can go get some other gear. Uh, we can get uh, a new recipe from out of that little chest over there. We've got alpha font leather right here. If our inventory ends up filling up, what we can do is we can just donate all this stuff. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, we can murder that guy right there, but I don't really see the point. It's kind of an unnecessary combat. We've also got a few more critters over here. We could see if we could shoot one of them as part of our hunt. Oh, he moved on me. There we go. Did he drop anything? He did. So he dropped some alpha font meat, some alpha font leather, some other stuff. Very nice. I do want to make a leather outfit about as soon as possible. So having an extra like grip of alpha font leather sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Now let's spread out a bit. Oh, there's some more. I think these are called... I forget the names of these. Hey, we found a little buddy over here too. That's mine, bro. You ain't touching that. Give me that. He's trying to gather it, but we basically just like blocked him from doing it. A couple more of the little alpha font critters over here. You do get mounts later on that you can ride around, which is pretty sweet. They'll help you get across the map much quicker than we're doing it on foot. And so I haven't got to the point yet where you get mounts, but I have not I have seen screenshots and other things that sort of seem to imply that we're going to get a mount at some point. Not a whole lot of resources around, but I definitely, yeah, I want this over here. There's a little bit more graphite. Yep, let me have it. Perfect, and we'll craft that into keys about as soon as we can. I'm going to follow this all the way down to the end, because you never know what you're going to find in this game. Like, I found, like, little caches of resources and things just everywhere. Doesn't look like there's too much more over on that side, but there might be something out here. 
<laughs> Looks like we hit the end of the road, actually. There is fall damage, so be careful about that. Make sure you're not chucking yourself off any massive, you know, K2-style cliffs and just expecting to survive when you hit the bottom because, wah, wah, spoiler alert, you won't. Uh, you will hit the ground with a resounding thump, and it will be gnarly. I don't see anything that looks interesting down here. Nothing shiny. Nothing kind of standing out. Yeah. Looks like we're pretty much empty down here. There's a big crystal right there. We might be able to use that for something. I don't know if that's just on the outskirts of their village or what we could possibly use that for, but it might work out for us. Might be useful. I wonder if I can... Oh, that's the throne. Yeah, we've come out on the back end of the village. Or at least we're in another village. Is this a different village? Oh, it is. Wait, no, it's not. Hmm. Well, shoot. I don't know exactly what's going on over here. I'm not exactly sure. The layout is definitely different, though, so maybe they expanded with the resources that I gave them. Their cities, I think, do grow and get, like, larger as you decide on a faction that you want to side with. Um, I wouldn't side with anybody in the beginning. I would kind of keep your motives and your goals to yourself and just kind of, like, upgrade people as you need to in order to get the gear and kit that you want. But as you get further into the game, you are going to want to pick, like, a dominant faction to ride out with. Uh, throughout the course of the game. We don't have a shovel or anything. We can dig that with just yet. But I'm assuming at some point we'll be able to get seashells out of those piles. Haven't done it yet myself, personally. But hey, there's a pearl right there. Love me some pearl. That's kind of a rare resource. You don't find those very often. So there's not a bank or anything that I've seen so far. So I don't think we can store up any of this stuff. But it's not a bad idea just to throw it in the old backpack. Like while you're out here. I mean, we've got all this stuff. We can throw the Alpha font leather in there pretty easily. And then I think we can probably throw some sandstone their way. And we've got the carrots. We've got a pearl, which is worth a whole bunch of resources. And they also like soft glass. Or no, they like the spistols. That's what they like. They like the spistols. I just got to clean out my inventory. My inventory is kind of overloaded right now. Hold on to gravel moss. Don't sell your gravel moss because I've had a ton of trouble finding enough gravel moss to actually get by. Like, gravel moss seems like it doesn't come around very often, and you sort of want to save it. Even if it means you can't make the jump up to the next resource level or whatnot for a little while, don't get rid of your gravel moss. And avian pepper. I've actually never seen that resource before. So it seems like it's actually changed around completely from my other playthrough. Like, key resources are, like, in different spots than they were last time. Which is sort of a... Actually, it's a good thing. I was worried I was going to have to replay the same content over again. The map is the same, don't get me wrong there, but the people who inhabit the different areas and the resources that are available to pick up are different. And so, that's a really, really pleasant surprise that I've seen so far. Uh, that surprises me, and I like it. That's really, really good. That means that the game is kind of focusing a little bit on having some replayability, too, if you end up getting through it. I'm not sure if the ending or anything like that changes, depending on which, like, who you side with or whatever, but that would be kind of a cool change. I would be very, very supportive of something like that. We got some puffle eggs over here. Sucks to be you, puffles. I'm abducting your children. Enjoy. Oh my goodness. Those little chugs. They're going to have to figure out a way to get to the bottom of that. It looks like we got a little puffle herd over here, too, doing his own thing. What's out this way? Looks like we got a cave of some kind. You know what? I think this is where I fell down. It absolutely is. Now, this is where I fell down. The resources in this game do respawn. In case you're wondering about that aspect of it, like, is it ever possible to pick the map clean? It's not. They do respawn, and even if they didn't respawn, uh, the enemies that you kill on the road that are, like, traitors and warriors and stuff like that, they will drop a motley assortment of goods every single time that you kill them. And so, usually, it doesn't take you too long to kill a couple of enemy faction members and just, like, steal their stuff if you're really having trouble, like, isolating and finding some of the things that you need. So, keep that in mind, too, is that waging war and, like, causing problems with other factions is 100% a way. You can just be, like, a reaver in this game or, like, a raider or, like, a pirate if you really, really want to. It is perfectly efficient, and you'll get a lot more of the work order things that you can convert into, like, uh, espionage orders or, like, economic orders or diplomatic orders to basically... So you turn those into the king of any settlement once you get the ability to craft them. 
and the king will follow those instructions. And you can use those instructions to either like sabotage nations, to prop nations up, to help them become dominant, all that kind of crazy stuff. And let's see here. What do we have around? We got a couple of meager yams on this side. We are a little bit hungry. Do we have any food like in our backpack right now? Yeah, let's let's eat the meager yams. That sounds good to me. That'll probably get us most of the way back up towards energized. I don't think these guys like us very much, so we may want to kind of lay low with this dude for a minute. I'm not trying to get smacked right now, but I do want these grand cones. Grand cones are also a resource that I feel like I never have. And so, like, I'm always on the lookout for it. Like, you'll notice that as you play the game. There's going to be little things as you're running around playing the game for, like, hours on end that you'll be like, it's harder to get this than this other thing, so I'm kind of going to prioritize having, like, a stack of those in my backpack at all time. Mine has been, like, grand cones, and mine has also been the moss. I can just never seem to find the moss anywhere. Mm, are these populated right now? I can't loot those. Okay, I would have liked to have looted those because we need to make some more arrows so that I'm actually combat effective. But for now, we'll just avoid enemies and we won't fight them. A little bit more wood right there. That looks good. Okay. A little bit more wood to be had. It's never a bad idea to travel far and wide carrying your wood to other nations. We got some foxes over here. I don't know how much they like us. Now, these guys may not be excessively stoked about our existence, but we can donate and see if they like us after we do that. Uh, they are hostile right now. Let's give them some puffle eggs. We'll give them some currants. Give them a couple of those. Does that bring us up into neutral territory? Not quite. All right, well, they don't like the peppers, so they don't want those at all. The things that they like, puffle eggs, lean iron, roseberries, I don't have any of that stuff, unfortunately. I do have a lot of wood laying around, though, so if you guys want, like, a stack of wood, I can do that if it bumps us up to neutral and makes us kind of, like, even keeling on the same side. I just don't want to get attacked for right now. I'd prefer to avoid it. I would prefer to avoid it. There's also going to be one of these stones inside of here, and we definitely want to grab one of those. Oh, these guys have, like, crushed buildings and stuff. Looks like they're having a hard time. These guys are struggling. This is one of those shiny orbs. I should bring it to Grob. Yeah, don't go back to Grob until you have five of those. There's no point. Just make sure you pick up one and it triggers the quest, but don't go back and talk to him until you have five. Trust me. What kind of outfits do you guys have? I wanted to see what armor these dudes had. I don't even know if I can talk to the king. Oh, wow. He's pretty trickstery looking.